Hi everyone. In the last video, we did an overview of my Notion system, all the key elements of how I run my life and business in Notion. Now we're going to start going through each section one by one and flesh out how it all works in more detail. So today I'm gonna to start with looking at how to build a command center dashboard, which was the first screen in Notion that I shared in my overview. I wasn't actually planning to start here, but some great questions came up in the Facebook group. So I decided let's start right here. It's a pretty simple page, so it's also a good opportunity to introduce some of the basic concepts of how to use Notion. So this will probably be the most beginner entry level video of the whole series. So it's a good place to start if you're new to Notion. And I'll go a little bit more slowly explaining the basic functionality of Notion in this one than I will in most of the others, because the others will be covering more advanced topics and more, or I would should say, more intermediate topics and we'll move faster assuming you have a basic understanding, but this one will fill in a lot of that basic understanding. So this is a good place to start. Then after this, we'll go through piece by piece throughout the rest of the Notion system, introducing in between some interesting ideas or thoughts I have along the way. So it'll be fun and we'll cover a lot in a very short amount of time. Okay, so this is the command center we looked at in the overview. It's the main dashboard for the front page through which I access the rest of the site, or at least the key elements of the site. And the objective here is to keep it as simple as possible while giving you access to the most important areas, quick access, but also to organize it. So it sort of gives you a framework in your mind of how the whole system is laid out. So as I explained, it's got focus, growth, business, and home slash life areas. I'm not gonna go into the areas, that's what the following detailed videos in the previous overview video covered. I'm gonna talk about how to actually create this dashboard. So. Again, more of a beginner introductory video this time, and we'll get more intermediate in the next one to come. So I'm gonna shrink myself and then enlarge this so it's easier for you to view on the video. I think the last one was a little small, so I never work at it at this resolution, but I'm enlarging the text so that you can see it more clearly. All right, so everything in here is either text, headings, or links uh, with one embed down here. We'll get to that. So. I'm going to duplicate this page here, create a new page, and I will toggle back and forth between the command center and the new page, and we'll recreate some of this. All right, so some of this is just literally just typing in text. So to create these, we are gonna to go to the new page here. First, let's just title it. Title it whatever you want, command center, home, dashboard, whatever title you'd like to give it. So I guess I shouldn't assume anything. We'll add the cover by hitting add cover. It gives you some samples you can choose from within their collection, or you can find your own and upload them, or you can use the free Unsplash stock photo gallery. So just choose whatever photo is relevant to your life. Okay, then to add an icon. Of course, you just click add icon and choose the icon you want. You can also upload. I like to upload a lot of custom icons. Now, flipping back to the command center, we've got focus, growth, business, and home life. Let's create each of those categories. Back to the blank page. Just type here and you'll, you'll get rid of those other options and you'll just have a page. You just wanna create a page. A dashboard is a page, not a database. So enter focus, hit return. Now. That's just normal text size, but what you want is a heading. So you go up here, you click on the six dots next to it, go to turn into and turn it to heading one. That makes it big. And you can make it whatever color you want by highlighting it, double click on it, choose the letter here, and then pick your color. So for the second one, growth. Now we can do it a little bit faster. If you just, instead of typing the word, you hit slash H1 it lets you pick the heading format up front and then you can type growth and it will already be at heading size. Again, double click, choose your color. Now, they're on top of each other, but we want them side by side. So again, you click on those six dots, hold and drag all the way to the right till you get that vertical indicator. Let go and now they're side by side. The next one, slash H1, business. Of course, you'll choose your own titles, whatever is relevant for you. But this is how you do it. And then you drag this to the right of growth. See, it's you could go under one of them or get the vertical line into the right. Let go, and you got three. 
now, lastly, slash, again, I'll, I'll do it the original way so that you can see how to do it home, slash life. In case you have it already typed out, you just click the six dots, go to turn into, change it to heading one, change the color to whatever color you want. Grab the six dots, drag it so you get the vertical arrow. Ah, so, okay, so by default, the page is not full width. So you have to go up here to the three dots in the upper right and change it to full width to get the full width, which you, I think you definitely want for a command center dashboard. Okay, so actually we had these color bars. Let's do it that way just so you can see how to do that. Instead of, or in addition to this color, you can click here, again, the six dots on the side, go to color, and instead of picking a color, you can select a background. So say you want an orange background. Then you can highlight in here and choose the text color within it. I find if you have a background, often white is the best. Yeah, that's what we got there. So you can do that again to each of them. Go color, pick a background. Um, if, you have a, if you're in, also I should note that I'm in the dark mode. If you hit command shift, L, you can switch between dark and light. The other way to do it is go to settings, turn dark mode on and off here. I prefer dark mode because, I mean, looking at a backlit monitor is essentially looking at a flashlight. <laughs> and if I'm going to stare at a flashlight all day, I'd, I'd prefer to stare at a dim flashlight rather than a bright flashlight. So I think it's a little bit easier on the eyes. Um, but of course, it's up to you. White background sights can look very elegant. Uh, I think dark ones look a little more dramatic and I tend to go in the more dramatic direction. You want to use color to guide and to mean something in most cases. So red is draws attention, so I make that focus. I differentiate them just so I can have a visual quick reference and I can almost choose them by color more than anything else. Uh, over here I use color more deliberately, so organizing by color. Create meaning through use of color. All right, so now if you're just doing this at the beginning, you don't have a system that you're adding this on top of, then this is a great way to start to lay out what kind of system you want. So I would start just with this, lay this out, and then type out all the sections under each you would like to ultimately have. We're going to build them one by one and it's going to take days or weeks or even months, but to lay out what you'd like to have is going to give you a roadmap. So we're going to start by just typing in a word and then we're going to turn it into a page. So let's say Daily action zone is what you want to have first. And of course, you'll have your own sections. You can use mine as ideas, but you'll customize endlessly. A lot of the stuff is just being deliberate about every important aspect of your life. Not just letting things go ad hoc, but to very deliberately plan what matters, identify what matters, and then plan habits, routines, projects, activities around what's most important to you so that you're guiding your life. Your life isn't just dragging you blindly behind it. We basically laid it out. Now these are just type text. So how do we make them more usable? How do we make them link to something? Because essentially all this is, is a page of headings and links. Each of these links to another page. Very few of them link to databases, though there are a few exceptions. The daily tracking links to a database habits, routines, fitness, these link to databases. So you're linking to either a page or a database. In most cases, you're linking here to pages because dashboards are pages. Dashboards are collections of various types of content with some embedded databases and other widgets and nodes and various things. So a page lets you design your whole layout, but you can put databases into pages. So that's why we create dashboards. So what we are basically linking to here is dashboards for each subsection in most cases. Okay, so now we have this text. It's not a page or anything. So we want to turn it into a page. So click on the six dots, select turn into, and choose page. Now it's linking to a page. Click on that, and you've got a whole new page. Do whatever you want on that page. What we're doing on this first page, the main command center dashboard, you can now do on this sub page, which is lay it out and build it the way you want it. All right, so workspaces, turn into page. Daily tracking, turn into. Now, let's say you wanted to turn it into a database. You don't have the option for database here, so you'll turn it into a page. 
you'll click into it and then choose database. And now it's a database. So we go back to command center on the very top, when you click into any of these pages or databases, you have a breadcrumb, a directory. You can click back that way. Of course, you've got the forward and back arrows up there too. So now we've got database, page, page. Now, what's happening here is you're actually sticking these databases and pages, your, their home is embedded inside this command center page, this dashboard. That may or may not be how you want it. What I do is I don't actually create original pages for dashboards or original databases inside of the command center page. On my dashboard, you see these little arrows next to almost everything it means that these are links. These are not where those dashboards and pages and databases are housed. These are basically shortcuts to them. What I do is on the side over here, on the left side, we've got my organizational system of pillars, pipelines, and vaults. Again, I'm gonna get into this in more detail. I gave a quick summary in the previous video. I'm going to do a whole video going into that in much more depth. But we have the four folders, dashboards, which is where the command center is. I will organize the original databases and, and dashboards and pages inside the pillars, pipelines, and vaults organizational system. So I would, if I were going to create a daily tracking database like this one, I would not put it here. Daily tracking to me is something directly supporting my pillars. It's measuring the effectiveness of how well I'm moving toward my pillars. So I'm gonna keep my daily tracking folder over there. Drag this into here. Now it's kept over here. Now it's the home of that database is over here. We can do the same thing with pages. You drag these over here. Now they're parked over here. I just find that a little bit more organized. Then over here, what I do in the command center, create it by typing slash link. It's gonna give you the option to link to a page or link to a database or create a link database. So in this case, link to a page. We're gonna look for the page we wanna to link to, which is daily action zone. Scroll down to daily action zone. Boom, there it is. Put it back where we want it. When you drag it, you wanna get that narrow arrow. That's the same width as the header. If it goes to a bigger width, that means it's not under the column. It's creating a whole page wide you know, column of its own. But if you drag it up so it's got this, the blue indicator is the width of the column you're putting it in, then you know it's in the column. And now we've got a link. It's gonna take you to the page just like the original did. The thing to remember here is there's only one place that databases and pages are housed, but you can create a link to them from anywhere. Same thing with the database. The database, if you organize it wherever you want on the side, it's not linked there. You type slash link, it'll give you create link database. It'll give you the option of which database to choose. If you're starting out, you might as well just create them all in the command center. It's a little bit simpler. And then you can always drag them over here and recreate the links in the command center. So that's all we're really doing is going through, laying it out, putting our headers, giving it the color and background we want, typing out the categories that we're going to ultimately want, and then turning them into pages or databases, deciding whether we want to have the home, the stored home of that be in the page or in a separate structure on the side. In the beginning, it doesn't really matter. It only matters as you get more and more, and you can always change it. You can drag it over, create links. So no big deal, whichever direction you decide to start at the outset, and you lay them out. So that is pretty much it. That's all there really is to my command center. It's just a series of links organized in a way that means something to me and lets me quickly access the different subcategories or the different action zones. And that's all we're doing is creating a series of bookmarks really. Now, a few other fun things on the bottom. The next video, I'll do a quick video on how to embed a weather forecast. I'll just do a separate tiny video on that. It'll come out immediately after this one, uh, at least within one day. Over here, I've got the keyboard shortcuts. Now, learning keyboard shortcuts is fantastic. It really speeds things up, and I would highly recommend you do that. We've got to set the toggle here. You pick the ones you want. Notions Help Center has all these navigational shortcuts laid out in this format that you see here. You just copy and paste the ones you like and you embed them here. So how do you create a, to a toggle? To create a toggle, you need a new row. If you're in any row that doesn't have one underneath it, that one has one underneath it. But you wanna, but there's nothing, if there's nothing underneath it, all you do is go to the plus sign. 
next to the th six dots. Hit plus, you get a new row. So say you want to add a toggle. Hit slash, start typing T-O-G-G, -G, toggle list. There's a toggle, give it a title. Keyboard shortcuts. I like to make a heading bold, so I'll highlight it. Open the toggle, and now you can paste anything you want into the toggle. So if you want to put all these in there, highlight all of these. Hit copy from the Notion shortcut page. All right, so now this is a good point. These are all under this column, but we don't want them under the column. So we're gonna close the toggle. We're gonna to take the six dots and drag them underneath. So here, see the indicator is only the width of the column. Down here, it's the whole width of the, of the page. We want the whole width of the page, or at least half the width. We could do a half and they'll fit. Either way, now they fit. Toggle them in and out. So in the show notes under this video, I'm gonna put a link to Notion's page that lists all of the keyboard shortcuts, so you can copy and paste those here. I'm also going to link to Notion's help page. Their support and help page is fantastic. It's obviously laid out in a Notion format. It's a really great demonstration on how elaborate a Notion wiki can be. It's like a, an, a, the ultimate Notion wiki used for Notion's support and instruction and help. So I'm gonna to link to that. Any of these things that are too confusing, they have a dedicated page for every function, for toggles, for linking to databases, for every little thing has its own page with extremely clear instructions. It's one of the best software, certainly one of the best SaaS software instruction platforms I've ever seen. So I'm gonna to link to that in the show notes. If you get stuck on anything here, just go look it up there and that'll solve any question you have on any specific functionality. Again, I'm gonna do another video on this embed over here, how to embed a weather widget or any widget for that matter. And that's pretty much it. I can't think of anything else on this page that I haven't explained other than the, the widget embed for the weather that's going to be in the next video. Everything else is a link to a page or in a few cases, a link to a database. It's that simple. The hard work is then building out each of these pages and databases. But start with this, get a layout of what you would like to have as your control center, as your command center, and as your life operating system. Like what would be helpful to have organized, structured in this way? And then lay them out by category. So maybe growth, business, home aren't your three things. Maybe you're only using it for business. Then instead of growth, business, home, I think everyone should have a focus section. But instead of having growth, business, home, if you're only using it for business, you might have sales and marketing as the main column and then different subsets of sales and marketing. You might have client operations and then maybe a list of each client. You might have a media production and like several at a higher level for those. For me, I'm pushing more functionality to deeper levels because I want to cover everything in my life. Perhaps you're just using it for home. You may have a category for family, category for like home admin, and then a category for social life outside of home and family. You know, you need to think about what you want to use this system for and then design it around those objectives. But this is a very simple but very effective way to lay it out and get started and design your intention of what you want your Notion system to ultimately be. So that'll do it for this video. Next short video will be on how to embed that weather widget. Then I'm going to do a more detailed video on how to build a task database to manage and prioritize every item in your life day to day, the things you have to get done to move the ball forward and how to organize and sort all that in your life. That'll be the video after the weather widget. So lots more coming and from there, we're just gonna build out throughout the entire system. It's gonna be fun. So I hope that's helpful. Let me know if there's other stuff you would like to see. If this is of interest, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get updates on future videos. Leave thoughts or questions below and hit like if you found this valuable. It boosts the video in the algorithm, helping others to find it. And I write a newsletter called Mind and Machine on increasing human capability. I give away several of my best Notion templates to anyone who subscribes to the newsletter. You can, of course, unsubscribe at any time, but I hope you'll give it a chance. I work hard to pack it with a lot of valuable insight. The newsletter link is also below in the show notes. That comes out about every three weeks. Thanks for watching. Lots more to come.